I don't like this belt grinder's table for a lot of reasons. One of them is, first of all, it's just stamped steel, which really isn't a huge deal. But the main problem is whenever we switch belts, you have to slide it in this little groove here to get it out and put it in. It's kind of inconvenient, and to be honest, we don't really use this section over here. If you just cut off this section, it'd be easier to change the belts. So what I'm gonna do is make just a new table. It'll look a little bit nicer as well. I have this piece of aluminum that I very roughly cut out with the Sawzall, and it's just gonna be a better shape overall. It'll be like that. I'm gonna make my rough cuts on the milling machine. I just have it traced out with a Sharpie and some scribed lines, and then once I get closer to the final dimension, I'm going to really get it accurate. I'm gonna put this at the level that I want it, and then we'll slide our stop in place. This is a Harbor Freight mill, and one of the problems that it does have is the Z-axis sometimes will slide down. It's just, it's better if you put this lock in place and lock this both at the same time. That went pretty well. It, it had a lot of chatter in it. That's just because this piece is sticking up so high. It doesn't have so much support, but it went okay. It is just kind of made the surface finish a little iffy, but that can be filed later. Now I'm gonna flip this around and do this side now that that'll be parallel. The thing is, this definitely doesn't have much support, but if you just take lighter passes and play with the feeds and speeds, you should be able to get the chatter to a minimum. Before I flip it over, I'm gonna deburr it so it can sit flush with the vise. All right, I'm done with that pass. Just deburr it a little bit. Now we can take this out. See, now I have two parallel edges and we'll just keep working around. I'm not totally sure how I'm gonna be able to work on this face. It'll be a little tricky. It's so high in the air. I don't even think the mill has enough travel to be able to get that. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of brainstorming to figure out how to square this off. I might just do it with the sand. I can kind of get an idea of what that's gonna look like whenever this is all bolted on here. It looks a lot nicer, especially since I fixed up this back plate here. The belt lines up perfectly now. This will just be a nice addition. So not a precision machine here. I'm using the tiger saw just to rough it in more. I think one of the problems I was having when I was cutting it out of a big sheet was it was vibrating a lot when I had it clamped in the vise. So now I'm just fine tuning that shape. And then once I get it close enough to the line, I can just hand file it. These saws really cut just amazing, especially when you have a good blade on here. I have a Diablo metal cutting blade and it just goes right through the aluminum. It's definitely a lot faster than so a hacksaw. The machine that I need to use next is the machine that I'm working on. Kind of ironic. I need to change out this belt and you can see the problems. I have to bend it around that corner and it's just a pain. It'd be a lot easier if this whole thing just wasn't now there. let's use this to clean up the rest of this part. This piece definitely gets really hot whenever you're grinding it, so you have to periodically cool it off. Now I'm gonna take this piece back off so I can mark out the holes. There it is. Now I can also choose exactly how close and how far I want this to be from the belt. I probably want about an eighth of an inch gap. With that plate clamped in place, now I'll be able to mark the holes. That second hole is in a spot where I can't reach it with the Sharpie, but I got the one hole marked and I got a little bit of, a, of the second hole. So what I'll do is I'll line this up, just like that, and then I know right where to mark the second hole. Now we'll mark our center point. It'll be exactly in this spot, so if you don't mark this hole and your drill bit slips a little bit, That'll make the positioning of the holes wrong and it'll probably won't clamp on. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole. It might be a little bit small, but that's better than being a little bit big. The hole is slightly too small. It just doesn't wanna go through very well, but that's okay. I'm just gonna drill one that's a little bit bigger and it'll only take like a few thousandths off. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the other hole. I'll just deburr it with the countersink and then they line up perfectly. That's exactly what I wanted. Well, we don't have a countersink the right size. It's, it's a big screw, but 
I remember my brother made this countersink in machining class, and this actually is the perfect size, and it's the right angles as well. So I'm gonna use this. We have the key chuck where it just pulls right back up so we can always have it right by the machine. Normally these things would be used for keys or lanyards, but this works really good for chuck keys. The size of this chamfer is the same as the size of the head. You know that that's gonna be perfectly flat. All right, this fits in there really nice. It's almost perfectly flat. Now, whenever I was taking this out, it started to lift up a little bit, so I'm gonna sand that, and then that'll really just make this flush. Both of those fit in there really nicely. And that is really nice. Now I'm just gonna do a final deburr, and we'll be ready to mount it back on the machine. Now we can go ahead and bolt everything in place. That fits on really good. I'm happy with how that turned out. It's definitely worth it to take the time to get these screws lined up just right. It lines up perfectly. This table is way better than the old one. For Not to mention the old one had all this rust on it. Not that that makes a big deal, but this looks nicer. And if I wanted, I could even sand this and make it look really nice. But it's super stable. It's on there really good. Let's go ahead and start grinding some stuff. Before these improvements, I could not do a grind like this. I had to clean this edge up, and now I can actually corner that, and that worked really well. And not to mention, this is, just being closer is a lot easier, and I mean, changing the belts is so much easier. I can just pull it out, and then put the new one in, and I don't have to like work it in between there. It's just a lot easier. definitely a huge improvement. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.